Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a great day. I am back with a good friend, Alexander Helene. He is an author. He's also other things like a dad, uh, an attorney, and uh, but the main thing we're going to talk about is books. I bring that up because I keep having attorneys on the show. I've had like I've had like five lawyers on the show this year or whatever. So like I don't know. I don't know what it is about being a lawyer and then writing uh, writing fiction books, but they seem to go together. Maybe it's the background. I'm not sure. Do you have an opinion, Alexander? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, David. Um, awesome to be talking with you again. I think the last time I was on with you was like three years ago or something. It was it was a long time ago. Um, yeah, I think, so, it, I think it was nice when Corona was still in full swing. Um, yeah, and I was with, we were talking with um, Adam uh, Furman, another attorney. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I was on with Adam. No, so as far as, you know, because I, I heard your show with that Alexander Palacio, um, I heard your show with him, and yeah, I know he's an he's an attorney too. Why do we all write? I think because part of the a big part of the job is writing, and I think you mm -hmm. have to, um, if not enjoy, at least know how to write to get into it. I don't think I don't think anybody goes into law because they like legal writing, but because writing is something that they can do, and it's a big part of the job. So, um, and I think when you're writing legal papers, you dream of, you know, I guess a different kind of language that's less dry and clinical and more. Um, enjoyable to read so that's my uh, that's my theory as how, how accurate that is I don't know but. yeah I, I most of the you know I have a, my cousin was a lawyer he was a lawyer in like two or he had a he had a he passed the bar in multiple states because like have you ever seen the movie up in the air where like the guy flies around firing people that was like his job so yep. he was like a he was a, an attorney and he'd go to these companies and they'd hire him to like basically clear out the staff and they needed a, a lawyer to do that really 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 interesting but um his undergraduate degree was biology but almost every other lawyer i've met has an undergraduate degree in something to do with words like philosophy or literature or even creative writing or something like that that tends yeah. to be the pre-law background history for me yeah um yeah or history yeah history is a really common one as well and actually that's something um I've had a lot of, you know, newer authors say, oh, what should I study to be a better author? And I'm like, history is probably the best thing to study. And the reason is that it's, first of all, it's about real people. So you know what real people actually did in real situations. But uh, it also informs informs you on the way the world works. Like why were things the way they were in 15th century Northern Italy, which is one of my favorite like time periods because things were so politically complex um, yeah. Well, yeah. why were they like that? Oh, well, there's a bunch of things that the culture, the religion, all that stuff interacts. So, if you, especially if you're writing fantasy, you start to get a really good grasp of how a functional world, um, how a functional world works. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know that helps add to the um, to the you know to the color of it. I don't I don't think you have to get super far. Like, was it George R. R. Martin had the comment of like. Um, you know, we don't know what was the politics of the Shire like. What was their economy? Did Hobbit yeah. have sex? Like, I don't think you need to like. I don't think you need to get into all of that. But you know, some kind of basic understanding of what you know an agrarian society might have looked like, or you know, a Renaissance era might have looked like. You can just add, it just adds it adds a lot to it. And then also when you're trying to imagine, because I know with my own writing, you're trying to imagine like, all right, this is the kind of society I'm thinking exists here. Um, how would that actually work to a degree that? the reader would need to be informed of that mm -hmm. and have it make sense to them you know you know i don't think i'm not a big fan of world building to the extent extent where you you know write a 700 page document of how everything is going to be um that works great for some people and in, in some stories um that bores me to tears personally i'm like yeah. i just wanted to get writing but um you know i think some you know basic degree of understanding uh definitely definitely just adds to the adds to the flavor of a story and i think yeah i think you know being into history whether or not you studied it formally in college or anything uh can help with that so i think that might even be more useful than being um you know uh, a creative writing major in, in a way yeah most of that aspect so of my my thing is like most creative writing majors and literatures literature majors that i've met and this is this is nothing specifically against any of them but they don't do a whole lot of writing. Of like it doesn't end up translating into them being productive. Uh, and maybe that's another thing. Um, you know, as a musician, like productivity was all about the grind. Like you had to be practicing every single day or you weren't ever getting the gig and you certainly weren't making any money. Yep. So for me to slip yep. into writing, it's like, well, I just apply that same philosophy to writing and boom, their books happen and like books come out 
And people are like, how do you write some yep. new books? I'm like, I just sit down and write every day and then books come out. Like you get finished with it's things. Ama- it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you, when, you, when you, head into the, you head into the woodshed, uh, you, you end up making stuff. Um, that's a good attitude. That's a good attitude. But yeah, I think a, lo- a lot of that gets missing from certain undergraduate degrees, let's say. Um, so the other thing, I, I was just reminded of Brandon Sanderson. Now, I like Brandon Sanderson. I feel like people think I hate him because I criticize him so much. That's not the case. I like Brandon it's Sanderson a, love, a lot. It's love. But like one of the one of the things in the Stormlight Archive is their monetary. He created a new monetary system, and the monetary system was based around these jewels that they put in like little glass marbles. And I'm like, okay, that's very creative. It's very fun. It kind of goes with the magic because like the jewels can store magical energy or something, right? The problem is, is that it's terrible currency. <laughs> it's absolutely one of the worst current. You know, why does everyone just go to gold? Can we just like have a better yeah. system than gold? Well, we have like magic paper yeah. now, credits, right? We have like galactic credits. Yeah, yeah. Is basically what we have. Like, I don't know too many people who keep, who like walk around with a big stack of cash to buy anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah. Yeah, we go with gold because it's divisible, fungible, it's interchangeable. Valuable. It's It's great, yeah. So, like, what's the problem with jewels? Well, they're not fungible. Like, every jewel is cut differently. You can't have like a. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, interchangeable jewels. They're all different. Um, and then they're encased in glass. They're fragile. Like, they're just terrible money. It's just a terrible kind of money. <laughs> yeah, like trying to be a little too clever. Um, I, I think the, you know, in the old Flintstones cartoon where they use literal clamshells and called them clams, I think that would work better than uh, it, than jewels and glass cases like that. Yeah, we have cultures that use things like clamshells and even like, knotted ropes and things is different kinds of currency as long as it's durable enough that you can use it and everyone recognizes it as currency you're probably going to be good on the currency uh, it doesn't have to yeah, be gold um, or silver but gold and silver is really good because it doesn't just break into shatter into pieces from carrying it in it, your pocket it, it, exactly um david i'm gonna hop off camera if that's okay but sure. we'll keep talking sure all right cool all right i'm gonna put uh all right, I'm gonna put a. I have a link for uh, Alexander's Kickstarter over in the comments, so you guys can check that out. I'm gonna link it again just in case. Uh, this is for the third book of the Swordbringer. The first one was called. Uh, oh my gosh, what was it called? I have it here somewhere. Uh, the last. Yeah, the last ancestor. Yes. Okay. So the first one was called the last ancestor. I can actually, I can actually link that one. Um, hey, I'm back. Uh, I also have a new, another book. I keep coming out with books. Uh, I need to like really think about what I'm doing here as far as releasing books. I tend to come out with too many. I got another one coming out in November. Uh, anyway, that's a good problem to have, though. Yeah, I'm like I have all these. I have like this backlog of books, and I need to. I need to. Uh, I need to get them out. Is 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 what I decided. Uh, so anyway, here's here's that one. Uh, Swordbringer book three. And if you haven't read the first one, that's probably a good place to start. Is there a tier that includes like ebooks of the first couple yeah, books? Yeah, most of the tier, like uh, I, I believe there's, it's one tier is just um, the new book, and then the next tier I think is all three ebooks, and then you can even get tiers that have all the uh, paperback as well. So okay, you can definitely good. get the full the full saga. Okay, um, so you can check that out. That's a good way to just buy them all in bulk. Um, I might do is. that when I come out with book three of The Eternal Dream, which is going to be a longer book. So I might do like a box set or something like that on Kickstarter nice. that people can get if they just want to get all the physical copies. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I didn't prep for the show enough because I'm missing the book you published that I made. Is it over here? Yes. That is okay. Uh, here it is. <laughs> okay. So Pulp Rock, this is one that Alexander edited and published earlier this year, right? Oh. It's been a long yeah, year. I've moved across the country. It's been, it's been a really long year. Yeah, that one was February. I think I started bugging all you guys back in like September or something and started getting stories in. And then I was like, oh, I got to write my own story for this. So yeah, um, it got, uh, and then I was like, why don't we do a crowdfunding? And uh, so we did that um, tour. It was like around november or something of like december of last year something like that um it got funded and you know out it came and uh, you had a wonderful novella that you you submitted for it and i highly recommend everybody should buy the book just for that alone um but there's some other good stuff in there too yeah so uh there's lots of cool stories all of them are around music i want to bring this up because like 
this only has nine ratings, which means people are not reviewing it. We need like more reviews on, on this book. So if you Green. grabbed it, you know, drop a review if you liked some of the stories in it, and just say like what what stories you liked, and that'll help help people decide whether this is like a, a book they want to get. I think it's really cool. Um, I haven't read every story in it. I was going to do a video like on every single story, so I'll probably do that a little nice. bit later. But I've been moving. Like it's just been hard to do content. Um, I lost basically all my hearing a couple weeks ago, and so it's been really hard to make video content. Um, I can't imagine that. I read your, I read your post about that, man. I didn't realize the extent to um to which that was the case. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's okay. Well, I mean, it, we have to wait like four months to see if it heals, and in the meantime, yeah, yeah. I have other ways. Honestly, um, the music part is not the hardest part. That's a what's what everyone gravitates to. Is like you're a musician. Isn't it? Doesn't it really suck to not be able to hear anything? And the answer is like yes, but I'm a musician <laughs> in the 21st century, so I can make things really loud if I need to. Like it's yeah, uh, yeah. And you know, like I have a headphone amp right now. I might be bleeding into the mic. I don't know, but I can make it loud enough to hear anything. And I have like you know, 100 watt guitar amps and 1500 watt PA's. I can make things as loud as they need to be. Most <laughs> most rock musicians have lost all their hearing anyway because they yeah they crank I've, I've it lost way too a fair loud. amount myself. Yeah. So like that's just how it is. Um, but the really the really hard thing is actually speech. It's that like you you know somebody's talking to you and you can't. It's it's the the uh, the analogy I made was like it's kind of like going if you go to a foreign country and you kind of half know the language. That's what yep. it's like. It's like. Maybe you go to Japan and you speak a little bit of Japanese. Like you can order, but somebody starts talking to you in Japanese and it just, it becomes incomprehensible. You're like, did you just ask me for like, what did you ask me for? I don't understand. Yeah. So that's you get like, like every word. Yeah. That's what it's like to have yeah. hearing loss. Like the words are oh, come man. out jumbled and your brain tries to rearrange them into something that makes sense. And then sometimes the sentence comes out and you're like, I, I don't think you asked me for for a beef bone just now I, i'm guessing you asked for something else but that's what i heard i heard do you have a beef bone for me and it's like no i asked if you see my thumb oh yeah, yeah. and the thumb. thing is is that the, the thing the thing is is that um and I, you know i noticed this too especially when i was younger and you know like i had a family member where there's my you know my dad or somebody or grandparents who who weren't hearing you or even like you know if my brother or for whatever reason couldn't seem to hear me and like he didn't have any hearing loss but you know when somebody has to ask you a couple times maybe the room is a bit noisy and like you get frustrated at the other person yeah without thinking like maybe there's a reason that you know they can't understand what i'm saying so i'm sure you get a lot of that too which is a bummer man but yeah that's... it sounds like you're trucking through um with a good attitude yeah it's just hard in like noisy environments um you know you go to church and like it's really boomy and echoey <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, so like, you're like trying to hear the homily. It's like, luckily I know the liturgy, so it's like, I don't really need to understand that. But, you know, like, you know, the priest comes up for homily and you're like, what? What did he yeah, just say? Yeah, I'd really like to understand what he's saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting there, I have to like cup the hearing aid. I have a hearing aid that attaches to the side of my head, which goes on like that. It's a, I'm a cyborg. Okay. It's like a cybernetic nice. implant. It's kind of interesting. But with inflation, uh, you're like six trillion dollar man now. So. Yeah. Nah. Uh, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Like implants are annoying. Uh, they kind of, you know, uh, in cyberpunk, they kind of get it right, where, uh, you know, your your implants bother you. You know, that's a that's a thing with like uh, things that go through your skin into bone, for instance, which is what this one is. It's a it's a oh, wow. titanium implant that goes goes into your skull. Well, you know, your body doesn't really like that. It doesn't like things going from the bone to the outside of your body. Like that is not normal, and yeah, you're, yeah. You're like no, 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 we want skin to protect us, but yeah. so it it gets irritated, it does weird things, it itches. Like um, some people have like immuno reactions to it, or they get allergic to the, even if you use titanium, you may have like weird immunological responses to it. It's very strange. Yeah, I, I, you mentioned cyberpunk. I just hope we don't get to the point where it's like, sorry, Anon, you had the wrong opinion about this issue. We're shutting off your your cochlear implant. <laughs> yeah oh that would be that would be the worst where it's like ah you haven't you haven't you said something naughty on twitter we're gonna just disable your your implant what no yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> luckily these don't actually like connect to the internet or anything like they have Good. bluetooth Good. ability but i don't enable um, it so it's just kind of a standalone oh, it's a standalone device nice. which is good yeah 
That uh, is good. That is good. So, you know, let's check out the chat a little bit. Um, yeah. All right. Someone said they bought my book. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Fresh and Slice. Um, nice. Get Rakita Law, and I think he got banned. I don't know why he got banned. Um, yeah, then like, he got reinstated, didn't he? I don't know. I don't. I don't follow yeah. him. Um, okay. I don't. I don't follow him really. Uh, oh, I yeah. don't enjoy his content personally. It's just not for me. But if you guys like it, that's yeah. cool. Uh, uh, yeah. Law involves a lot of reading and writing. If you can't write well, you can't be a lawyer. Yeah, I think it's a lot. You know, we have these courtroom dramas. I love courtroom dramas uh, because they're drama, but they aren't very realistic. <laughs> You no, know, not at all. <laughs> as far as how a courtroom works, uh, yeah, it, 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 the, I can't, I can't watch, you know, Law and Order because when you see, like, what they object to and, and everything like that, I'm like, you sit, sit your ass down. Like, you can't object to stuff like that. Like, yeah. it's, it's like, this is ridiculous. I mean, I, I'd, I'd much appreciate it if they just went over the top, like Phoenix Wright style, but they don't. Um, yeah. Well, you know what's funny is I, I saw a clip. I don't remember what what trial it was from it might have been this alex jones trial that just happened and the lawyer no 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 maybe that was it the lawyer was like running up to the jury and like doing all these crazy things people are like well, what's the big deal it's like have you never been in a courtroom like this guy could have could have been like hauled off for what he did you know yeah like he could that's like a contemptible offense you can't just approach the jury like that yeah and i mean i i can't say i've never ever done trials of that magnitude and seen stuff like that happens i'm sure once you put tv cameras in the courtroom all kinds of you know the the inner showman of all these people that couldn't make it in showbiz comes out and they're trying <laughs> to use you know their their rhetorical ability you know they all want to be the next attic finch or whatever um, yeah so who knows what kind of antics go on i i still think that i only saw one clip of that particular trial but it was the funniest thing i've ever seen because the attorney was like so um it's obvious that your credibility is the most important thing to you. And he's like, my credibility is not the most important thing to you. They're like, well, what is the most important thing to you? And he goes, to crush the globalists. And the lawyer's just like, okay, to crush the globalists. I'm like, that's uh, <laughs> like that's going to be in a court transcript, yeah. like you know, yeah. publicly available like forever. People are going to cite to that case, like you know, whenever they get to the case of like you know the United States v. D David David V. Stewart, you're going to point to like, well, I'm. I'm just using the crush the globalist defense. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, it was you know, right here. I think I was, re you know, what I was remembering was the, the Kenosha one with the, um, what's his name? Who, who shot the rapist in the dick. Anyway, the lawyer was pointing a gun at the jury. He picked a gun up and pointed it at the jury. Oh my God. Oh, my God. oh God. It's just like, it's hysterical. And like, nobody did anything about it. I'm like, I'm like, this is, I, you know, you wouldn't do this ever. You would never pick up a real firearm and point it at another human being. Ever. David, David the only, the only time I've seen that happen in the courtroom is in the classic three stooges short disorder in the court where that yeah. very thing happens. And, you know, naturally the gun is loaded. Um, but you know, again, that's fiction. Um, yes. So, like, it's um, like, I don't know there, if there's like an inception thing, like fiction becomes reality because people read uh, fiction about what they're doing and then they try to act out the fiction not realizing that it's drama if yeah you, maybe well, it's something like that it's really weird but like it was one of those moments that it's like i don't know who like like that was really a, a frightening thing like i would never have thought to do that like don't you feel intimidated with me pointing this assault rifle at you <laughs> <laughs> right right in between your eyes no they don't teach us that in law school <laughs> surprisingly like that's not a part of uh that's not a part of mock trial. They're like, all right, this is how you're supposed to hold the AK. This is how you're supposed to, <laughs> you know, find the, the oldest person on the jury and really make them scared. You know? Yeah. Uh, Dan Vint says he's a lawyer with a BS in biology. That's like my cousin uh, studying nice. for the patent bar right now. Oh, good for you. Good Pat luck with that, man. Yeah, good luck. Uh, patent law is a whole, man, like IP, uh, like copyright too. It's like a whole interesting thing. Um yeah. I, anyway, my, my comment on, on copyright is like, like, oh, copyright law experts. Like, if you talk to them, they're like, well, you don't really want to go to trial because you just don't know what's going to happen. Like, we don't really know what the law is until we go to trial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the important thing, and I think this is, you know, apropos to, to, you know, indie writers too, you know, when you're you're trying to do it all on your own and maybe you're, you know, for part of your story, you're reproducing some kind of language from something else or maybe, you know, you're trying to use an image or something like that. And I mean, I've gotten the question, you know, over the years from time to time, like what, you know, what could happen to me? Like this says it's copyrighted. What should I do? It's like, well, 
if you use it, like basically don't try to pass it off as your own. Um, and if somebody says like stop using it because it's copyrighted, like the best thing to do is to stop using it if it's actually like something they created. If it's you know you're using words from a news story or something like that, like yeah. they can go pound sand. But you know, um, the worst that can happen, like yeah, if you're trying to pass it off on your own or make money off of it, you know, like yeah, you could be forced to you know pay damages but then you'd have to show that you actually hurt them or you know they're like oh i want royalties you're going to be like why like i wasn't you know i'll just stop using it so i mean it's not the worst thing in the world but you know it's definitely something to be aware of but yeah you're right like there's a lot of it, it, there's a lot of stuff for like you know what could happen if it goes to a child like i don't know yeah there there was a really famous music one where uh joe satriani sued uh the bird pipe no, no, they sued. Um, who did he sue? Anyway, uh, they he sued a, a really popular. It was his song, right? Oh, yeah. So it was a melody he played on guitar, and it's one of the, it's a really lame Joe Satriani song. It's like one of his worst songs, although he loves it. <laughs> uh, it's just really boring. That's all. It's it's the chords. Um, now he said it's because it's exactly my song, and they. He's like, I just want you to give me credit and like give me a portion of the royalties. That's what he wanted, right? He's like, it's clearly my song. It sounds exactly like my song. It's the same chord, same melody, same tempo, same drum. But everything was the same. And if you heard them next to each other, you'd be like, they're, they're really the same. But as a musical yeah, expert, yeah. I'm like, the thing is, is Joe Satriani did not write an original song. He's using the chords from Paco Bell's Canon, right? Oh, so he's, okay. he's oh, literally wow. trying to sue someone for doing Paco Bell's Canon. Which is a, a song from like 1700 or something, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, he, he lost, I, I imagine. They settled, they settled before it went to a, before they sat a jury or something. And there's, you oh, know, okay. it's one of those, they don't disclose the nature of the settlement. Which could yeah, mean anything. Yeah, yeah. It could mean that like they realized that experts on this are like, you don't want to put this in front of a jury because you just don't know what they're going to think. Once you put yeah, something well, like this in front of non like people who are not musicians, you don't know if they're going to be like, well, that's the same or that's clearly not the same. You don't know what they're going to say. It's a, it's a complete crapshoot. It's a total, it's a total crapshoot. But that story kind of reminds me of uh, like, uh, I don't know if it was the onion or something, but it was, it was a joke about how Metallica was trying to trademark the E to F chord progression. Which oh was yeah. Like, <laughs> was pretty funny. Like, yeah, they're going to try to trademark the half step. Oh, okay. That, I could see that happening. Um, <laughs> the jury, Dan Vince says the jury goes with whoever they like better, notwithstanding the law. That's what happens. Yep, 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 yep. Not, Which is why it's not a, not a good idea to point guns at them. But. Yeah, yeah, not always. One of the things that, you know, technically <laughs> lawyers lawyers can be on juries, but one of the first things that happens if they find out someone's a lawyer is they try to get them off the jury. Um, uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't I haven't been called jury duty. Forget served. I haven't been called in like ten years yeah. in the in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I I wonder if it's because you know it's a public record that you know you're an attorney. So I wonder if it's like uh we're not gonna not gonna not gonna waste his time. It's yeah. fine by me. Yeah, I mean I don't. It, one of the funniest things about jury duty is the meme is everybody's always trying to get out of jury duty. No one actually wants to sit on the jury. Um, N no, they don't. Um, and it's kind of weird. I, I'm, I wonder what the I think if I had is. a chance now, I think if I had a chance now, I totally would just because um, I've, I've never done it before. And I think it might be kind of fun um, to actually, you know, be uh, <laughs> maybe this just says something about me to be like the one guy that they all hate because like I'm, I, I know like exactly what the attorneys are trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, you can't. You can't. That's not what they're saying. No, you can't. It's logically, that doesn't make sense. And then they'll like, you know, tar and feather me and. Yeah. It would be a good time had for all. So it's it's it would be kind of like I mean if you were to sit me on like a on a on like a is this music copying someone else? It's like this is not I'm not yeah. an ideal juror because I'm not a normal person. You can't convince yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm gonna come up with I'm an expert witness sitting on the jury. That's not a good <laughs> not what you want. So I, I just had a thought. Like I think it would be awesome if you could somehow like just if you're if you're an I mean we're getting kind of far off the field, but like. If you're an attorney and you could just use memes to make your case, like just have giant <laughs> placards, yeah, just giant placards and put them on an easel and oh, just be like, hey, you can see my, hey, my exhibit one. Totally, Let's totally do this with Alex the Jones. Cringe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I depicted the defendant as a soy jack crying with a gigachad mask on, underscoring the deceitful nature of his. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, 
I got too much, too much, uh, too much free time, I guess, or not, not enough as it were, because I haven't done that yet. So, yeah, I, I, that would be, uh, I, that would be pretty funny. I mean, that would be a fun joke story to write too, or like a, a that would be a good little TV skit or something like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> don't give me more ideas, man. I got like yeah. you, like you said, I got enough stuff that um, you know, was in the pipeline that like I don't need more in my. <laughs> Yeah, JR Crash says everyone wants to get out of jury duty, but anytime there's a high profile police shooting, everyone wants to debate each other online about the facts of the case. Now, that is true. That is, well, a, yeah. And I, I, I did some thinking about this like a while back, where it's like everybody comes to their own conclusion based off some, some portion of the evidence that they've seen. OJ Simpson trial is a really good one where everyone's like, OJ definitely did it. And I'm like, well, you know, now that I'm an adult and I've seen more of the evidence presented in a more objective way, I'm like, I could not, I'm not saying I think OJ didn't do it, but I could see how a jury could actually acquit in that circumstance, given the multitude of facts that just were, didn't assemble into any kind of coherent narrative. Um, yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. And I mean, a lot of that might've been the fault of the, uh, of the prosecution. I'm not trying to cast aspersions yeah. on them. I don't know if I could have done as good. If I were in the same situation with all that pressure, you know, like, could I have done um, a better job? Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah and, the, and the cameras are on you. Now, uh, Antonin yeah. Scalia, a Supreme Court justice, he, back when he was, like, I guess being nominated under Reagan, he said that they should be cameras, like, we should have the cameras in the in the Supreme Court. And as soon as he got on the bench, or as soon as he got elected to the, or, uh, you know, confirmed for the Supreme Court, he was like, actually, no. And the, the reason he's like, this is lawyer's work. It's very technical. And really, the opinion, you know, the opinions that we write after the fact are going to be the best view of the legal stuff that's going on there. It's like if people are just seeing some out of context oh. clip on the news about oh, just this imagine. justice saying to this, like it would just, it, it'd be the circus. You'd never be able to hold the objectivity of the court anymore. Um, so he completely flip flopped on that. The presence of a camera, like I have a camera on me, it changes your changes the way you act and what you do and the way you think versus having a conversation with a private conversation with people you know. Totally. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been I've been work from home for the better part of two and a half years, and um, it's wild because I think about what you know having meetings was like beforehand, where you're in a room with the person and or people. Maybe you have a, a you know a screen with what you're working on and you're really talking and having a dialogue and things like that. To when you have like a Zoom or a team calls, you know, with 15 people on it and nobody has their camera on and everybody's probably you know checking out. I mean, I'm like, oh, there's other work I can do. This person's talking. I got to check this email. I'm like, oh, 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 you know, it's or like when you do have the cameras on and like everybody's checking their hair and everything. It's it's yeah. just it's just interesting. It's like it's I don't know. Yeah, the camera I am having that like when you're doing your job like imagine like whatever your job is somebody just pointing a camera at you like you could be like a cook and like somebody's just have is filming you all day and you're like i'm trying to chop the onions man like leave yeah. me alone it's gonna, it's gonna throw you off you know yeah for sure like the camera eye is different from a human eye there's a feeling yeah, yeah. when the camera oh, yeah. eyes on you everything like because a person isn't looking at you all the time and yeah. you i don't know it's a completely different thing that the filter of the camera eye just changes perception to such a large <clears throat> degree and imagine yeah yeah imagine if you're writing and somebody's like filming you writing you're gonna be like i just i can't i just can't do it yeah here's a here's a good example of if you guys have ever stepped into an elevator with someone and been normal and goofing off and then you notice the camera and then you change your behavior this is something people do like yep, yep. you know as soon as they notice a camera like uh and shop owners and stuff will do this they'll have the cctv showing what the camera sees and you come in and people yeah. Is that, that's me? Is that what I look like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you walk into a store and the, the monitor's right up there. Yeah, like I better fix in. my posture and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Suck in that <laughs> gut. Stuff. Yeah. Someone yeah. might be recording me. I want to look my best. Yep. <laughs> you know, as I'm, as I'm putting the candy bar under my shirt, I want to make sure the camera's not adding 10 pounds. <laughs> How many cameras are on you right now? <laughs> um, uh, that's, that's a good, that's, I mean... I think it would be easier to say if we lived in England, which I heard. I, I've yeah. read that London is one of the most uh, surveilled cities on earth. Yeah, right? it, it like is. Where I am now in the middle of nowhere, zero probably. So. Yeah, there's <laughs> now the, my neighbors. A lot of them have cameras on like the outside of their house, which is yeah, weird but, because like yeah. nothing yeah. happens where I'm at. It's like very yeah, but calm. 
but but you know what this kind of you know when it's i, I guess because you had mentioned cyberpunk earlier right like we're we're living in, in the Cyberpunk. panopticon and everybody everybody seems to just be you know rather blasé about it like oh yeah there's cameras everywhere it's it's not doesn't you know <laughs> i don't know how much it's actually um changed people's you know mm-hmm. deeper behavior the surface level sure but um it just seems like the kind of thing that like all of a sudden it's it here we're all normal. in it and everybody's like yeah 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 i think um part of that is um like I mean, Cyberpunk. If you guys have played Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven or watched the anime series they have on Netflix, uh, they're both pretty good uh, as far as like storytelling goes. Uh, everybody, you know, the both of these do this thing where like the presence of the setting is just not as big a focus as it was in the eighties and nineties. It's like yeah. the setting is what it is, and it's normal, and it just allows certain kinds of stories to be told, and you don't really. A lot of them are not making big commentaries on humanity or things like that. Right? Yeah, it's a very 21st century take on it, right? Yeah, there are some in, in like cyberpunk uh, edge runners in particular. There's this uh, just kind of this you, you ship of Theseus replacement of human parts, and yeah, yeah. the whole time it's just very uh, a very uncomfortable uh, feeling that you get watching people like turn themselves into cyborgs. <laughs> just like why would yeah. people do this but it's normal like it's it's like yeah it's their normal um and it, i think all that other stuff's kind of normal now it, it almost makes you wonder then is like is are, are we in a phase now where uh you know the popular stories are going to be about utopias or i guess about where things are at least not you know dystopian and dysgenic is it going to be like now we're going to want you know stories about where things are going right and that's going to be the future we're trying to imagine you know yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, a hopeful future. That's that's more like um, that's more like Star Trek, right? Like Star Trek yeah, has yeah, a kinda, yeah. has a more hopeful future, but you can still tell lots of dramatic stories even with like a utopian future, and and it's because oh, you, yeah. the utopia is at risk. So, like, how can you yeah, yeah. write a utopian fiction and have conflict? Well, just the utopia is at risk. That's um, that's yeah, how like you do conflict, it. Conflict is never going to stop, but it's just interesting because instead of you know, in the 80s, it was like everything is going to decline and this is what it's going to look like when it declines. And now we're like, well, like we're in like we're in the decline, like we're, at, we're all that stuff is no longer uh, speculation. Right. Yeah. We've so, kind like, of what, inherited what do you do it. now? Like, yeah, you can't like shock anybody into being like, you, oh, my God, they're going to be like tracking you. You're like, yeah, dude, like I know, like I'm being tracked we, right now. But, we live in a world where like the one of the most successful musicians of all time who also happens to be an oppressed minority um, can base, have his have his bank account turned off because yeah. he he said something naughty on the internet. Yeah, 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 ex- exactly. Like we already exactly. And, and uh, I was playing Cyberpunk, and you could pick a different origin. It doesn't impact the story really, but like I picked the corporate origin because I'm like that's kind of me. I'm a corporate bro, right? I like wear suit. So like one of the things that happens is like the corporation just takes all your money out of your bank account. You're like it's ours now. Bye. Right, and it's like yeah. people are like, oh, so dystopian. I'm like, they do that now. Yeah, it's PayPal like, can just take like your money they, away. It's literally just like you know they're reporting facts. Like it's <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just how things are now. That's just reality. I, it's just reality with you. with light up eyes. I have a question for you though, David. So, um, is that why you tend to really like to write in more of a fantasy setting? Yeah, I don't have to deal with all that or does that not have anything to do with it? Uh, you know, I've, well, a lot of the philosophy, I mean, I, I have written in Santa, like sci-fi settings as well about some yeah. of the stuff. They're just no, not as have, popular. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, you know, like you can read Prophet of the God Seed, which has a lot of the philosophical takes that are common in cyberpunk as well. This oh, idea sure. of like a unity of thought that dehumanizes you. Um, that's like one of the main conflicts in that book. So that that's definitely one you guys can read. I'll I'll, I'll bring it up here so that people can. <laughs> you can you, I think it's still free. I, I made it just like free a long time ago, because no one was reading this book. You know, so you can read it for free if if you want to read it. Um, nice. It's called Prophet of the God Seed. It's a you know, I, it's one of my it's still one of my most downloaded books, but I think people tend to not read it a lot because it, I don't know. I don't know why. No, it's in- interesting. Yeah. I- I'm I'm guilty too because I I, bought, I purchased Voices in the Void but I haven't read it yet but um that one uh, just seemed really cool so like yeah I know you write and you know I, I know you write sci-fi also but I was just wondering because yeah, it seems like you've been 
in a yeah. different on a different pack, you know. Yeah, I prefer f- fantasy because uh, there's a lot of reasons. So fantasy lets me first of all escape from the dystopian world. Right? <laughs> People like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and talking let, about you don't have to deal with. <laughs> you know, when you can just have magic versus technology as a stand-in for magic, you can discuss right, right. some of my more esoteric philosophical ideas just in a more direct and like obvious fashion. But if you don't sure. get those, then it's still just like a fun tale. It's still just a fun yeah. story about about the, you don't have to get like the whole deeper what is the nature of reality kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's I, going on in the books. I like that. I like that. That's a, that's a good. That's a good way of putting it. There's a YouTuber that had over twenty five thousand in his PayPal, and they froze his account and wouldn't give him his money. Hey, I believe it. You know that happens. Yeah. They uh, just, you know, we just out, we just out. So we privatize depression. You know. It's... Have you ever intentionally or realized you unintentionally created a self insert character? No. Let me. I. I. I, I I'm going to answer this in a very roundabout way. The answer is sure. yes, intentionally, but uh, in a, in a funny way. And it's actually going to be in this in this next book. Where is it? Generation Y. So the uh, Afterglow, which is coming out uh, in November. Oh yeah, nice. So nice. a lot of these stories you guys already heard on the channel, or I've released them as audiobooks, or they're in another collection like the um, Generation Y: The New Lost Generation that JD Cowan put together. Um, yep. So a lot of this stuff is already there. So you've already heard it and like it, which means you can drop a rating on it if you want because you've already read the book, most of you. Um, but it'll just be all those things collected. But there'll be a new one there that is a fictionalization of a very true story that oh, nice. is, is just me talking as a narrator about a, a real university experience. Uh, but like, you know, I changed the names to protect the guilty kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I gotta read that. I, I can't say I've ever intentionally or I don't think unintentionally had a self insert character, but I was um I was chatting on Twitter with uh with Josh Lysek. I don't know if you know Josh Joshua yeah. Lysek. Uh and he said something about everybody's first the first character in anybody's first or the main character in anybody's first book is a self insert. And I just commented back, I'm like, first the main character in my first book was a female. And he's like, Yeah, that's very common to do. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, maybe unintentionally that is my self insert. I don't quite yeah. know what that says about me, but um, yeah. I think it well, it comes with uh, the basic theory of mind. So as we develop from babies, one of the one of the things that happens is we start to realize that other, not just that other people are real, but they have thoughts that are different from our thoughts. Yeah. And so yeah. I think a, a lot of the uh, this is why I, I I ridicule a lot of people online. Maybe I should do it less. It's probably it's probably Maybe. a flaw. <laughs> It's probably a flaw. Where's the fun in that, though? Where's the fun in that? But yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I should, I should be more charitable. Let's put it this way. But I'm right, right. But right. the thing is, I, I realize a lot of people have a very flawed theory of mind about what other people are thinking. They think other people right. must be thinking like them because their thought process seems coherent to themselves. And yeah. Yeah. when you start writing a lot of fiction, or if you just start dealing with a lot of people, like I've been a teacher for many years, you realize people have very weird ways of thinking. In some cases, yep. their thoughts are very different from how you think. So it's really easy to make yep. your first forays into character development based on yourself because your character is going to be rational in the way that you are rational, not rational yep. in the way that Bob is when he's completely a weirdo, right? You're like, why does Bob think this? Well, when you're able to answer that, you're going to be able to write some really good characters. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that bleeds over into real life too because I think a lot of times, and you know, we all do it, like. You know, like you, I'm going to try not to, you know, cast the first stone. But, you know, there's a, there's a definite um, danger of not, you know, being of, of just like literally not being able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes or frame of mind or see something from that perspective. That's not just, you know, hippy dippy therapeutic talk. I mean, that's it's a real thing that I think everybody should, you know, know how to do and, and like work on. Right. Cause yeah. Something might just seem and it's a great line from actually from a. Space Viking by H. Beam Piper. I don't know if you've ever read that. Um, great old pulp writer from back in the day. But um, one of the characters, like the older kind of elder statesman Space Viking is telling to the main character, he says, you know, because the main character says, oh, that's crazy. And the, the older guy whose name I can't remember says, it just seems crazy to you because you don't understand it yet. Yeah. Like, ah, that's actually like crazy. Tr- yeah, there's a truth to that. It's, it's kind of one of those things like if you feel mad, take a step back. 
Now, yeah, like yeah. if you physically take a step back out of the situation, it actually will put a lot of things in perspective. It sounds crazy, but it does work. It's like your first reaction when you get angry is to, to try to push forward. Take a step back and and you'll see a wider view of what's going on. <clears throat> it's, it's, yeah, it, it's amazing. I'm trying to be a lot more charitable towards people because I, I've realized like, you know, one of my flaws is I, I'm not very charitable towards people who think differently from me or people that I think are not intelligent, especially. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So people are like, why do you block or ban so many people? And it's like, that's me being charitable because if I see that stupid comment, I'm going to want to, like, I'm going to want to tear that person down and they don't really need that. Yeah, and you, you don't need that either. That's the thing. It's a yeah. two way street, you know. Yeah. David, this is why people love your stream because they come for the book talk and they get, you know, like this really good content. I mean, we're talking <laughs> about that. like improving yourself. I mean, you can't get that everywhere. Usually it's just going to be, you know, uh, com complaining what I call the bitch and moan economy about, you know, Laser Sword franchise's latest disaster. Like, your, your viewers get more than that. Yeah, you guys, come on. I mean, and this was a, are you going to review Rings of Power? I'm like, you already know it sucks. I told you it was going to suck. You had every yeah, signal it was going to suck. Then it sucked. You've had other people who can't stop yammering about corporate yeah. bullshit tell you it sucks. Why do you need me to tell yeah. you it sucks? I mean, I can yeah. watch it, but what am I going to say? Well, it was poorly written by people who didn't know what they were doing. Well, I, I, yeah. I can look it up and realize that the people who are running the show have never had a writing job before in their lives. No one who worked yeah. on the show had ever worked before. Of no, course it's going to yeah. suck. It's a bunch you, of first books by people. You, you and I are about the same age, so we both know that the most limited resources, you know, to, to, the most limited resources are your, you know, your time, money, attention, yeah. and the energy. And like, why would you know? So we're both, you know, forty, forty-one. Like, so we probably got another good forty years left. Yeah. Knock on wood. Like, I hope. Are, I are hope. you gonna wait? Are you gonna waste? Are you gonna waste that time, energy, and attention on like something that's just like? Yeah. Garbage. Like no. Yeah. Like forget about that. Like. And this is a point about like your attention. News media, guys, like turn the news off, please. I've, I've said this before, but I'm just going to reiterate. Turn the news off. You don't need to watch the news. There's not any information on the news that no. is going to be critical to your decision making. And if there is, someone else is going to tell you. Like I don't even yeah. need to watch the, the news for the weather. If a hurricane's coming, my neighbor's going to be like, there's a hurricane coming. Yeah. You, are you yeah. guys okay? Well, you'll be like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, Or I could have looked at the sky and be like, you know, it's looking pretty rough. Yeah, maybe or, we should not know, go running. <laughs> or you know, you get the uh, you get the alert on your phone. You know, the yeah. weather alert beep. Like you know, we get that from. For, believe it or not, we get tornadoes up here in central Massachusetts. That's so. wild. Yeah, I heard something about yeah. that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we had a big one back in 2011, which was the most destructive one since I think 1950. But yeah, we're good for every 50, 60 years. A real, you know, yeah. wild, you know, straight out of Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Tornado, so. Yeah. So like yeah, you guys could turn the news off. Stop feeling anxious. Like Christ commands us yeah. not to worry. That's like what he says more. He commands you to do that more than anything else. I think is to not yeah. worry. It's really really common uh, that he would say that because he people are anxious. I see that you're anxious and you're full of many cares. You yeah. know how much more does does the Lord love you than the birds which he than just the birds feeds? In the sky. Yep. You know, and that's true. Like we have to be able to take a step back. And if you think yep. about the information aspect, it's like. <laughs> You know, there was this monk who was delivered to, to the monastery on Mount Athos as a baby, right? And he never saw a woman his whole life. Now, if yeah. you had told me this to like 21-year-old David, he'd be like, man, I feel sorry for that guy. Now, yeah. as like 40-year-old David, I'm like, man, he lived his whole life just in like perfect communion with God. Yeah. And yeah. never was and tempted. He never had that temptation of the flesh, really. I know. Bl or it was like so much less, you know. Like, Wow. What a blessed person. And, yeah. and more importantly, yeah. like, yeah, he didn't know what was happening in the world. He lived through World War. He died in 1983. So he lived through World War One and World War Two. Yeah. No, no, no clue. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I guess Mount Athos got uh, escaped the occupation. Maybe it was just too hard to get to. I don't know. I think they just kind of left him alone. Yeah. I think they just were like, they're not doing anything. Like, why go up there and bug the monks? They just yeah. hang out on top of the mountain. Yeah. Like and praying it's, and it's, it's, people still delivered yeah. them food and things too. Like people still walked up the mountain. Um, like I think if you guys have played, you guys have played Skyrim, right? There's like the High Hrothgar. 
I, I think that was like inspired by some of these monasteries like Mount Athos where like people would walk up and leave an offering of food for the monks. It's like, why? It's like, because I don't know. <laughs> we value them. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, they're, they're pray praying for the world. Um, it's funny too, that story, because a lot of people, especially online, will be like totally based, you know, like the manosphere types. Like, yeah, you never have to deal with, you know, feminine BS. And it's like, that's not the point of the story. It's yeah. It's more yeah, that the point of the story is it's like you said it's that that temptation and I mean the temptation could have come from other men for all we know right but yeah. like that's it's, so it's not that the whole point of bringing that up isn't to be like you know red chill like screw woman like it's just you know <clears throat> yeah he 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 just had a, a huge removal of like that's why monks go into seclusion and live in a setting yep. life is it's a it's a removal of the temptations of sin that exist all around us it it reduces it so you can yep. focus so much more on prayer and God. Yep. So like what a blessed life to be able to do that. And and what's really yeah. blessed is like, yeah, man, maybe I've had a lot more pleasures of flesh in my life, but who's more likely to go to heaven? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it could be, you know, you're trying to remove yourself from, it could be food, it could be pride, it could be anger, it could be any, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the lust, right? Like, yeah, it, it could be anything else like greed. It's like, there's yeah. no material wealth to try to seek to possess up there. There's no one who, yeah. you, there's no billionaires coming by in their jets making you want to have a jet or something, right? Yeah, yeah. and I mean, it's, you know, we're getting kind of heavy, but it's, you know, it goes back to Christ, right? Like, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to get to heaven. And when the young lawyer, there you go, asks him, what must I do? He's like, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, follow me, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's when, impossible. And with, like, and with man, this is impossible, but with God, anything yeah. is possible. And yeah, that's important so, I mean, too. Like Christ still does miracles on behalf of people of means, and he's still friends yeah. with people who are rich. You know, he he heals the servant of the centurion. That's a man of means. Um, Roman too. Like, yeah, yeah, an outsider, a Roman, and just because he had faith, he's like, yeah. you say it. I know if you say it, it will be true. Yeah. Boom. That's all it took. Um, and you know, Nicodemus, like he he wasn't. Like, it's not like Christ was anti rich people, but it's like. Exactly. You know, yeah. the burden of wealth, it can be very hard to give that up for for what matters. And, you know, that's really the message there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well said. Question from Smashball. Do you think PayPal and Chase Bank being able to do that uh, was the cost of convenience of money as a digital asset? It makes it easy for these institutions to steal or restrict money. Yeah, that's part of it. Is it it's very convenient. Totally. And it's secure in one way, right? Like... If, if nobody's carrying around cash, it makes it much less likely that anybody's going to want to mug you, right? Like, what what's someone going to mug from you? Your phone, which they can't get into? Your wallet, which has a bunch of credit cards that gets canceled? It gets very convenient. Yeah. But, but I mean, you know, at the same token, like, if a big bank or the government wants to um, get money from you, then they would literally have to rob you. They would literally have to mug you, like, in a, in a literal physical sense, not like, uh, you know... A, I got mugged because they took, you know, they swiped 20K from my bank account because I said the wrong words online. You know, they would actually have to physically mug you. So you lose that. You know, they, they actually have, it gives them less of a cost of, you know, the powers that be. It gives them a less of a, uh, you know, a barrier to, um, you know, ripping you off <laughs> than they would have to if they actually had to hire, you know, like Vinny from, you know, the North End uh, to, to come, <laughs> yeah, to come you up, and break you know? your thumbs and get That's your money. Yeah. That's the Italian sector of Boston, everybody, just in case you don't know. So. Yeah. Uh, Zimba Maru says, there's an island in Greece uh, when women aren't allowed because it's a uh, men-only monastery. I'm thinking of Mount Athos. There, I, Mount, I think by Mount Athos, and I think Meteora is also okay. um, in Greece. Yeah, yeah, like I think by law, women aren't allowed to go to Mount Athos. Nope. I think it's like the state says you're not allowed to go there. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's, it's like weird because it's on the... Um, um, Mount Athos, I believe it's on the uh, how do they call it? Hockey the key, the uh, like the little three peninsulas in northern Greece, and one of the one of them is like all nice beaches, but the other one is Mount Athos at the end of it, and like they almost have like a special like autonomous zone. Like I don't know if it's fully um, controlled by the Greek government. You know, I think the uh, this is the, the Orthodox the, Archdiocese has like control over it to an extent. Yeah, the EU is suing them to allow women in because of my equal rights. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I, like, I like the, the common the common refrain among our um, our circles is, "Cool, do Islam now," you know. Yeah. 
Okay, you're gonna let men into the into the convents, right? Yeah. No. Like, oh, you're gonna. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, men aren't allowed in the convents now. Okay. Well, why is that? Yeah. Well, what about yeah. equal rights? It's like, oh, it, some animals yeah. are more equal than others. You see. Yeah. Yeah. It tail is all the time, right? Yeah. But really, it's just about. Um, I, honestly, I like you, the next yeah. layer deep is just. It's not really about the fact that it's men only. That's a vector of a cultural attack because they hate Christianity. Y y yes. Yes. It's really what it yes, is. Well, it's yes. rings of power is that as well. It's an attack. Yeah. It's why why would they diss Tolkien's work so hard? Is because he was an yeah. extremely devout traditional Christian. Um, you know, he was the guy who go to Catholic mass after the Novus Ordo and be shouting things in Latin. <laughs> yeah, he he also he was also you know he, he unapologetically created a legendarium of the English, specifically the English people. He didn't write it for my Greek ass, you know, and yeah. that's fine. Like, but that's everybody. I think everybody can enjoy that. Um, of I don't course, oh, one hundred percent. But yeah, so that's 100%. the the so the vector of attack. It's like orcs or deciding orcs or black people. It's like yeah. Like no, the, uh, how did you? What why why you did you choose that? that? It shows that vector of attack yeah. because it's Christian literature. That's yeah, really what but it's like about. Th th this isn't just me tooting my own horn. I literally never heard that argument until about 2016. So I was already like in my mid 30s at the time, and like the first time I saw that was like 2016, um, and I was just like, that that just isn't the thing that like normal people think. Yeah, yeah, it's really not. It's uh, it really is something that's like a, a I don't know. It's it's a bizarre thing, but it's one of those inception things. That, like, how can we attack this? Like, how can we yeah. Um, how can we tear down this thing which is from our enemy? And the answer is, well, you're going to do it through some cultural vector. You establish equality as some sort of good thing. And then anything that doesn't appear equal, that's a way to attack it. Well, it can't be good because it's not equal, because it hasn't it hasn't expressed this ideal of equality that we want or feminism yeah. or something else. Yeah, yeah this bizarre, you know, t t t early 21st century conception that like has no bearing on um, you know, all, all the rest of human history. Well, I guess there's some pockets of, you know, of that happening, like the French Revolution or whatever. And um, I shouldn't say has no precedent, but it's just certainly outside of the norm of how, you know, normal people want to live. That's, yeah. um, that's, I think, uh, this, yeah. I think that's the thing is uh, that a lot of people online miss too. Like uh, these, if you spend a lot of time on Twitter, you're going to think that there's, a bunch of people who think like leftist journos on Twitter, and if yeah. unless you're like in West Hollywood, that's that's not the case, guys. Like normal, yeah. go out and talk yeah. to your neighbors. They're normal people, and they don't really know or care about any of that. So yeah, a, a yeah. significant portion of the of the cultural war part is in our head, and only when it like intrudes into the real world, you'll see people get up in arms. That's why you see he, he, school board he, FBI showing up to school board meetings. Yeah, yeah right. But I mean, it's, but that's why it's important to be cognizant of it because it only takes like I, I always like to say, you know, real life is Twitter plus two years because all the kooky ideas that happen online, like events, just give them time. Like they're going to percolate because yeah. the people that matter are reading it and, uh, you know, living it and, and yeah, working just, on this. I just saw a thing that Biden might block the, the sale of Twitter to Elon Musk on national security grounds, which yeah. is which is kind of showing your hand. It's like, yeah, uh, we run a bunch of bots on Twitter to make people think that the prevailing opinion is one way or the other to control journalists, which is yeah, journalists have a bunch of bots that follow them. I talked about this on a recent article, like they'll yes, get, and it was a good one, a really good one. Yeah. How do they the get office. ratioed yeah. into the ground by frog accounts with 5,000 followers? Yeah. And the answer is because yeah. all their followers are just bots that just, you can read the responses or a lot of them will be the same. It's because yeah, somebody's well, running a bot farm to promote an article. That's all. David also, also their content is shit too. Oh can yeah. Can I say that? <laughs> right. right. Yes. Their, their content is shit, so you know that doesn't help either. Yeah, so that's that's a big part of it as well. Um, but yeah, going back to fiction, let's let's promo this book a little bit before we start. Yeah, right definitely, definitely, so, definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, I got it right here. So the Swordbringer book three. The first one was called what was the first one called? I have the, it over the last ancestor. Last ancestor. The first one. I haven't read and, the second. And, one. Um, the second sojourn is the second one, okay. and um, I wasn't able to get a title that used incorporated the word. Uh, either first third. or third. Yeah. So I used final, but yeah, the final home is the last one. It's um, it's in the it's in the hopper. It's all ready to go. Um, we then we ran the Kickstarter for 
um, you know, production costs, trying to see, you know, trying to you know, work on this neo patronage thing a bit more. This wasn't like Pulp Rock, where I literally, in my Rush book, too, Dreamers and Misfits, both of those books I didn't have written. <laughs> I just had an idea and I ran a Kickstarter and I did the old, like, you know, burn the platform you're on thing where I'm like, all right, well, I better get cracking now. So, um, you know, this one was actually done and I'm like, well, you know, to gauge, gauge interest, you know, drum up sales, we'll, um, try to cover production costs because you know i'm a one-man shop here like let's let's run yeah. a kickstarter and this is how much i'm going to need for you know the cover art this is how much i'm going to need for the formatting um it's already been edited and then these are the kind of stretch goals i'd like to have and so um you know we ran it and then we got funded in like four days five days i was blown away um and right now we're we're working for some stretch goals i'm going through we're going to give it you know a last read through or two um i'm working with uh, manuel guzman who's to do the cover art for yeah um, yeah. The first two books in Pulp Rock, and we're yeah, working on. Honest. You know, he's got he's got some sketches and some. He started work on it, so I'm going to try to get the book out. I'm going to try to start fulfilling like before the campaign's over. Um, don't hold me to that, but um, you know, we still have great stretch goals. There's a lot of great perks like T-shirts and art prints. You can get a copy of Manuel's book, which I edited. He released that back in I think 2020. Um, so we're just trying to make book. it as as fun as possible oh yeah it's called in, yeah in, in, in search of sacha really beautiful illustrations and he wrote kind of like a uh, like a fairy tale sort of uh sort of story which i mean it's just, uh, you, you get it for the art alone but it's got also it's got a very nice story so yeah we're, we're just running that we got about another 30 days left i think we're only 500 away from getting a oh an omnibus edition <laughs> with a new cover john so, john baker says this is called new pup talk there's a typo there's a typo in the it's not a typo Where's my dog? I got a new dog. Hobo! It's got... Hobo dog! Here he is. What was, what was the typo? That says new pup talk instead of new pup oh, new talk. Pup. Where's the pup? Oh, well, you didn't you didn't tell them that I'm a furry. Did hey. You? The camera's not on. Where is he? I got him. Here, where's your blanket? Here. Hobo dog. There he is. There's Hobo dog. He showed up at our house, uh, and we're like, we cute. grabbed him, we're like, oh, somebody's dog's loose. And then, like, two weeks later, it's like, this is nobody's dog, and he's starving. And then, uh, now he's our dog, I guess. That's and hilarious. What, what bad thing, what, what's the only bad thing you've done? He doesn't bark. He's like, there he goes, he's just gonna lay down and relax. That's my kind of dog right there, man. He just, he's like my shadow, he follows me around. He got one of my <laughs> turtles, so I have these turtles. I have these box turtles, these Eastern box turtles. He managed to open up their enclosure and get one of the turtles and started chewing on her. Oh, it made me mad. But he's like, I don't, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> like, if it's like this rock, this is a rock that smells really interesting. I'm gonna see what's going on with this thing. Is this a toy? Yeah, you're, you're. Uh, he, the, the pup sounds super smart, which you know, there's not. That's a, it's a blessing and a curse. But yeah, he's, I, he's like a mix a of bird dogs or something. He's got a bunch yeah. of bird dog instinct. So I don't know. Anyway, so yes, it's a new pup talk. Cool too nice new pup i love it anyway so yeah let's let's go back to this there's some really good illustrations um that manuel does this is a full painted cover right is this a digital yeah. do you know if it's a digital painting or like he, he works they on are medium? they are they are digital he, okay. he does work in watercolors and he does work in other medium too he does sketches like he's doing uh, i don't know how much i can talk about it but he also does comic art yeah um i know he's got some projects in the works but um yeah no these are uh fully digital paintings but um he's always really good at taking you know my my rambling descriptions of things and like getting them how i pictured them in my head yeah um let me see okay so that's that uh please do think about backing that there is a tier yeah i probably look at the like the trilogy ebook and then you get all three ebooks you just get all of them at once and that's good yep so you can just read the whole thing um and then a signed paperback that's good is there one with like all the paperbacks that would be good too yeah there are there is there is and you can get them all signed too if you really want just because yeah. i know with past um crowdfunding um people seem to like that so you know i put that as a as an option yeah i occasionally mail out signed copies to people who really want them um i wasn't in a great place to do that in california because i was like it was really hard to get to the mailbox i lived out in, in oh country, yeah yeah, so, yeah. Like, uh, to go to the actual post office to mail a package, you know. So yeah, yeah, that that was always kind of a pain in the butt. But I, you know, yeah. if someone really wants a signed one, I'm happy to to get a signed one and mail it out to you. 
Um, I don't yeah, know. it just takes a little takes a little longer because, they, like you said, it's got to come to you, and then you know you can't ship it directly. But you know, but that's how it works. Anyway, so check works. that out. My newest books. I actually have a, a book coming out, and I have what's the newest book? Newest book's called Al Shafalda. This is yeah. Now, if if you want a fun story behind the title of this book, it was uh, this was a stand-in title. So uh, it's it's crab it's the crab people of, of titles. If you don't know the story about crab people from South Park, is that the crab people showed up because they literally couldn't think of a third act for their story, and then the time came to make that show, and they still couldn't. They're like, okay, so when they were writing the story before the season, they're like, all right, um, we'll think of something better later. But crab people, maybe crab people do it, right? So they got time to make the show, and they're like, we don't have anything better, so they just did crab people. So the, the Crab People episode is just the Crab People show up in the third act. Uh, the Crab People are trying to make all the men gay because the Crab People are weak, right? So it's the Crab People cool. titles and that I, I it's the name of, a, of an immortal album, All Shall Fall. So I'm like, All yeah. Shall Fall, the, or there we go. It kind of sounds like one of my cities that I use in my books. Yeah. So I just had that as a stand-in title and then I tried like a bunch of other titles. I'm like, I think I like All Shall Fall, the, and I just stuck I, with I, it. I thought you were going to say that it's the title that will make all the readers gay. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's like the... magic incantation. Like, yeah, it's the... It's, <laughs> it's basically, uh, you know... Um, it was a standing title, and I ended up sticking with it. So it's You a, know what, though? When I, when I first saw it, I was like... I liked it. I was like, it, just, it sounds otherworldly. It sounds yeah. like a language that doesn't exist but could exist. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that combined with the cover, um, I really dig the cover. You know, yeah, it's, so th- it's like that it makes me want to get like the the title as much as the cover makes me want to see what what it's all about. So yeah, this job. I mean, it might the, be the stand in, but you know, the cover. I don't have my my physical book is somewhere else. Uh, maybe my wife's reading it, but like the the cover is actually several AI images that I photoshopped together into one big thing. Um, yeah. So it's done by AI. I, I think I detailed how to do it. Oh, we have a Tinder bot there. Um, let's uh, hide user. There we go. Tinderhot.xyz. You guys need some Tinder hotness. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> now we're getting to the good stuff. And now we're getting to the good stuff. The the bots oh. show up always show up about an hour in, and they're like, oh, let's yeah. you know, let's Tinder spam. XYZ. You need some Tinder dates. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I made it using light. AI and then some other stuff in Photoshop for some lights and color grading and things like that. And then the title text. The truth is like nowadays, if you need to just put something out quickly, um, knowing how to use stock photos and plus AI art, you can come up with a really good cover really quickly. I am excited about, yeah. I'm like, I wanted to test this out and see if people liked it and people seem to really like it. And I've done even better AI covers since then. And you know why it worked? It's because the, the, the tower on the cover of the book doesn't have hands. So it, uh, the AI yeah. did a really good... <laughs> yeah, it's mostly, like, cover design's mostly about color and, yeah. like, whatever your central image is, in this case, like a burning tower, it's very interesting yeah. looking. And then it's mostly title text and stuff like that. So if you know how to do the title text and, and the overall arrangement of an image, you can use AI... Uh, I love the idea of reducing barriers to publishing so that anybody can get a story yeah. out and get it to market and see what the market wants and, and maybe find their niche and find their success. Um, yeah. There's a lot of filtering With that happens. cover that will catch the eye. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot yeah. of... And, and I mean... Oh, sorry. Go go yeah, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, I wonder if that's going to be the wave of the future is that instead of the AI, you know, everybody's like, oh, the AI, people are just going to start doing that. It's like, or they're just going to integrate it into you know, the, the human made stuff and like use elements that maybe were AI generated just to see what it can come up with, you know? Yeah. So I experimented with it and that was my goal is like, can I, can I use this for covers? Because most writers are not going to, you know, like if, let's say you have a 20,000 word novella you just want to put out for 99 cents. It's not really going to be worth it to like spend hundreds of dollars on a painted cover, um, or even to pay someone to Photoshop a cover for you, you need something that's going to be quick and easy. Yeah, yeah. Which so, uh, which AI program are you using, David? This one was done with Midjourney. Midjourney is what I usually use. Okay. Uh, okay. Stable Diffusion does some things better, like Human Faces. It will do really okay. good. Okay. But Midjourney actually does Human Faces really, really good now. Cool. Uh, I can. Yeah. Oh man, I don't even want to reveal this cover because it's kind of don't, a secret don't project. Think. But uh, I, 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 yeah. Don't yeah. do it then. All right. I'm as long as um, 
as long as Loab or whatever that was, that, that freakish image doesn't show up in every picture <laughs> I try to make, I think they're in good shape. I don't know if everybody knows that story, but yeah, that freaked me out. Yeah, that's a funny one. It, I think it has to do, it, it's something to do with the way that it, uh, you know, creates faces. It, it draw, It's drawing from some common common background there. Hard, yeah, yeah. Hard to guess, what are your thoughts on the Iron Age name that's been going around Twitter for indie media? I haven't paid attention to it, so I don't have an opinion. What was the um, what was the question, David? I'm sorry, I didn't catch about that. Iron Age Media. I don't. I don't. I know. I don't I've know. been seeing it. I don't know what it really is. So I don't have an opinion yet. Um, yeah. I I, 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 um, I'll, I'll, I'll give an opinion. That. I'll give an opinion, even though I have no idea what it is, because that's what you do online. I think it stinks. I hate it, and I wish it was not. You know, I, I hope it doesn't happen. How's that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> unless I'm unless I'm wrong, and then you know, I'll change my opinion. I'll say I always liked it. If it turns out to be good. Yeah. If it's good, then I always liked it. I always loved it. I called it. Called it. And if it's bad, then I always hated it. Called it. I called it either way. So yeah, yeah that's my opinion. <laughs> no, sorry, I really don't know what that is. <laughs> All right. So, um, thanks for hanging out with me. Are you? Are you? We about ready to wrap up here? Yeah. No, oh, this has been great. Forgot yeah. to promo the other one. So Afterglow promoted that one. Uh, yeah, All Shafal though. Go ahead and grab that one, guys. I think you'll like it. It's a five act uh, tragedy, just like Shakespeare, but fantasy and there's definitely some philosophy in it that if you want to dig into it it's there and that's not there then it's just a good tragic story about love and uh infatuation let's say Uh, nice some interesting stuff and a deal with the devil like you can't have a tragedy without some kind of deal with the devil actually you can't but nope in this case you can so (laughs) All right. Nice, yeah, and everybody should uh, should back the Swordbringer. It's it's Sword and Planet kind of coming of age uh, sci-fi cross with, I like to say, you know, buddy coming of age buddy slash buddy cop because you have a a young human and uh, his alien friend having all kinds of adventures of freaky aliens against, uh, you know, it's got your your sword and sandal action um, and some you know sci-fi interstellar stuff going on, a little gnostic. Uh, gnostic theology and philosophy mixed in um with uh with it all so um that sums up your alley yeah thank you yeah. to david for having uh, me on to to shill that and to just uh, shoot the breeze it was a good time all right so that's it folks you guys have a great rest of your day um back to project grab the new book grab pulp rock and if you if you got pulp rock i know lots of you bought pulp rock if you get it please just drop a review like nine reviews yes, is not please. really enough to just continue uh letting the book i mean the book is not going anywhere but uh, you really need a bit more than nine reviews for people to feel confident that they're going to get yep. a good collection of stories and there is there's some really cool stories in here um yep. from yep. lots of different perspectives and of course one of mine called farewell uh, farewell to once in future kings if you like spies who are musicians in space if you're a fan of something like i don't know cowboy bebop but you want it <laughs> you want it all musicians then that might be up your alley um, it's got some fun stuff in it. So I enjoyed writing it, and I hope you'll enjoy reading it too. Absolutely. All right. Have a great one, guys, and we'll see you all uh, next time.